This is a quick video tour of the Spellphabet Level 7 workbook. This is the second edition of this workbook. It's quite different from the last um, Level 7. Um, it's just a PDF download that you get from my website and um, I've printed it up and bound it um, with a comb bind and a nice shiny cover to make it pretty for this demonstration cover but um, you can just print it out on a regular photocopier. Um, here's the contents page, I'll put that on my website so you can examine it in more detail. There's an introduction with just some instructions on use but let's go through the vocab and see how the students would use it. So it contains a lot of homophones first, eight and eight which we have met in a previous workbook. Uh, the number eight and I ate my lunch, so there's two different ways to write. Both of those contain the sounds A and T but spelt different ways. Bales and bales of hay, cricket bales, bales of hay, ball and ball, I'm balling his eyes out, bear, bear, build, build, sit, notice build, be you, oh that's a funny looking book, and bury, be you again, we say et for that letter U, so quite often with homophones, if you know that both of these words sound the same, it's a useful way to notice that, oh, most of this word is the same as this one, bury, spelt regularly, and bury, spelt unusually, and really it's just the letter U and the lack of a double R that make it unusual. So even though it's a highly irregular word um, in its spelling, really it's only a part of the word that's irregular. And the same for build here, we have this BU that's also in um, the buoy that you swim out to at the beach, and um, the word built, I guess. Now, so you copy those words down, and then, and saying them out loud again, mapping the letters onto the sounds, and then you try to remember how to spell them here, uh, and then start again. So board and board, bold and bold, bow, bow and bow, boy and boy, and here, so there's that other BU. <laughs> And uh, bold, you'll notice that the bold with ED is the action. He bold her out or she, she was bold out. Um, this ED tells us this is a past tense. And the same for braid and braid. The donkey braid, that's got an ED. So you can tell from the structure of the word what the meaning is, is as well as just having to remember which one means what. This one, the which bruise, she bruise, it's got an S on the end, which is a third person S as distinct from bruise the noun, um, which has that S-E, which we covered in the last workbook. And then write those words down, then bridle and bridle, court and court, sell and sell, sense and sense, cereal and cereal, cheap and cheap, cruise and cruise, creek and creek, so it goes on, a Q and Q, oh, isn't that a funny Q? And um, it's got the K that's normally at the end of words, which we met in the last workbook, like as in boutique and antique, but it's at the beginning here. How tricky is that? Funny spellings. Deer and deer, descent and descent. So here we say these in our spelling voice. Descent and descent um, to differentiate them and help remember the different spellings. Draft, um, uh, draft, is that, what is that draft? Draft beer? I don't know. Do a rough draft. Oh good, it's not beer. Um, uh, do a rough draft and then um, the draft that comes in under the door. There's a draft under the door. So um, what the difference between those. Americans have this draft for both and don't have this one. Um, dual and dual. So here dual and duel using your spelling voice to differentiate um, these ones. And you, how about that for a beautiful spelling? You and you. But they sound the same but the spellings are different. Feet and feet, few and oh, few, and uh, so on, floor and floor, fold and fold, for, uh, fort and fort, fire and fire, <laughs> jeans and jeans. You can see hanger, hangar, the way the planes park, and hanger that you put your clothes on. So practicing that strategy of saying the words out loud, um, syllable by syllable, and helping to remember the spellings that way. Night and night, knit and knit, not and not, lots of homophones in English. Uh, links and links, loan and loan, mare and mare, meter and meter, moose and moose, and so on. Pear and pear, peel and peel, pie, pie, if you're in, into maths, and pie, the pie that you eat. And rows and rows, rough and rough, skull, skull the boat one, and skull the head one, is your skull. And story in a house, levels in a house versus story for bedtime. Turn and turn, through and through, yeah, so you can see whales and whales. And it's more or less in alphabetical order, world and world. And then we've got some triples. So here, flu, flu and flu. Oh, there's three different ways to write flu. So the bird flu, I've got the flu, and the flu that um, is like a little chimney. And so on, minor and minor and Indian minors, which I'm always trying to run over on my bicycle without success. Uh, peak, peak and peak, sorry to the vegans there, peak, peak and peak, I'm filled with peak, means an um, annoyance, 
um, and write and write and write. And a lot of people get these mixed up in, um, in printed materials, including adults. Saw and saw and saw, C's and C's there and there. Two, two and two. So this t is the one with like twins and twice because it's a number two. Now we're on to adding prefixes. So in accurate, inappropriate. So these ones, all of these are actual English words. We don't have any word fragments that we're putting prefixes onto yet. That comes later. So we'll get the word articulate, we'll put in on and we reverse the meaning. Uh, insane. So if you're sane and then you become insane, the meaning is reversed. So it's just about um, pointing out to students that's got a meaning, this has got a meaning. When we put them together we have a different meaning. In is the same thing as im, but these ones, m, start with m or start with p, which are both lip sounds, and m is a lip sound, and so the in changes into an m. Immaterial, because it's hard to say in material, so we say immaterial, immortal, impassable, not impassable. And um, then, so, uh, then un, so unbuckle, unfair, uneven, mis, miscounted, mismatched, misread, mistrial. Uh, disabilities, disagree, discard, disinfect, for brain, for poor, for worn, for word, uh, rebuild, refresh, replace, retell, rewind, decontaminate, deforest, defuse, now here now, fuse, hmm. um, yep, that's still a word, fuse, de derail, devalued, prefabricated, pre molars, pre record, prerequisite. Abroad, adrift, afoot, N or M. So here the same thing. When you have a word that starts with a P or M, usually we change N into M. So N uh, means in or into or on. Uh, so M powered, N able, N acts, encourage, N title. Uh, Non-event, non-believer, non-dairy. Overbalance, overcook, overleaf, oversize, mid afternoon, mid life, mid riff, uh, underwear, underwear, yeah, understand, underground, undergrowth. That's it. So just showing that you can add two bits, of, two um, components together, uh, and make a new word with a new meaning. And that long words. What we've got to learn with long words is they're generally made out of a number of chunks. Um, don't be too scared by the fact that they look long. Um, you can break them up into not just sounds and their spellings, but also meaningful word parts or morphemes, they're called in linguistics. So that's the first one. And the next book is suffixes, which are harder because sometimes you have to tweak the end of the word before you add a